let's step away from our flight dynamics for a moment and make sure everyone's on the same page about eigen analysis. You may have seen this somewhat in linear algebra in your first year math, but you may not have understood the physical significance of what you're doing, and you may not have had an opportunity to use it since. So let's say we have a simple equation governing, say, the motion of a mass with a connected spring and damper. So here's a fixed surface. Here's a mass, M, it's connected to the fixed surface by a spring with spring constant K, and a damper with damping constant C. So the force in the spring will be K times X from Hooke's law. And the force in the damper is C times X dot, the velocity. And we'll let, to make things simple, X equals zero be the natural resting point of the mass. So then, if we take, there's a now x equals zero and x is positive down, then if we take the sum of the forces in the x direction equals the mass times the acceleration in the x direction, we can write this as negative fs minus fd equals an x double dot, because the acceleration is the second derivative of the position, or the displacement, I should say. Um, or we can write this as mx double dot, substituting in the definitions above here and moving it all to the same side of the equation. mx double dot plus cx plus kx equals zero, cx double, uh, dot plus kx equals zero. And just to make it clear, this is because x double dot is v dt dot and x dot is dt of x. Um, and because that's true, we can write this second order equation of motion, because it involves second derivatives, as two first order equations. So we define x1 equals x and x2 equals x dot. And if we put that in, then we get mx dot 2 plus c x 2 plus k x 1 equals 0 and x dot 1 equals x 2. And we can then write that in a matrix form. So x dot 1 x dot 2 equals 0 negative k over m 1 negative c over m times x1, 2. Now, since x1 equals 0 and x2 equals 0 is the equilibrium state, this is like the trim state for an aircraft. So that the 2 by 2 matrix here is like the Jacobian A. So A is 0, 1, negative K over M, negative C over M. Now this system is linear, and so we can write the response to some initial perturbation as a result as a superposition of eigenvalues. Uh, or I should say as a superposition of eigenmodes. And so uh, solution is a superposition of eigenmodes. These are combinations of x1 and x2 that are ways in which the system naturally wants to move. 
So x1, t, 2t is going to be equal to the sum in k equals 1, 2. Of vk, this is a 2 by 1 vector times e to the lambda kt, and this is a scalar function of function. So you can see that while this vector will have different amplitudes uh, for these two components. They both have the same time dependency, so the motion is linked in some way, and that's what we mean by a mode. Now, the first important thing to realize is that lambda decay is complex. So lambda decay is sigma k, which is the real part, plus i omega k, which is the imaginary part. Now, you may or may not have learned that the exponential of a complex number gives an oscillatory response. So e to the lambda kt, which is e to the sigma k plus i omega k t, can be written as e to the sigma k t times e to the i omega k t. which can be written as e to the sigma k t using trigonometric functions cos omega k t plus i sine omega k t. Or generally what we actually care about is the real part which is e Sigma k t times cos omega k t. So this represents an exponential growth or decay, and this represents an oscillatory response. So here's time and here's x. Let's say for the case of a positive sigma k. Sigma k greater than zero, you get a response. Or the frequency doesn't change with time, but the amplitude changes continuously. And again, if this is positive, it will grow with time. If it's negative, it will shrink with time. So how the question is how do we get vk and lambda k? And we do this by solving all the eigenvalue problem, which essentially means that we need to find the determinant of a minus lambda times the identity matrix and set it equal to zero. So that means we take the determinant of zero, one, negative k over m, negative t over m, minus lambda times the identity matrix is going to be lambda zero zero lambda that equals to zero, which means now we're taking the determinant of minus lambda, one, minus k over m, minus t over m, minus lambda, and setting it equal to zero. Now we're going to evaluate the determinant. And this results in what we call a characteristic equation, 
the solution of which gives the eigenvalues. And here, since it's a second order system, if we use the quadratic formula, you can see over m plus minus square root of c over m squared minus 4 over m all over 2, then we get the following solution lambda 1 is negative c over m plus square root of c over m squared minus 4 k over m all over 2 uh, and lambda 2 is the same thing but with the subtraction. So these are now the eigenvalues lambda 1 and lambda 2 if Four k over m is greater than c over m squared. Then lambda will be complex. Now to get the eigenvectors, we put our solution of the eigenvalues back into the eigenvalue problem, which is a v one equals lambda 1 v1 and a v2 equals lambda 2 2. We're now lambda 1 and lambda 2 have been determined. Uh, and so if we write that out, 0, 1, negative k over m, c over m times, let's say, v1 first element, v1 second element, and this is equal to lambda 1, now known, v1, 1, 1, 2. What we can get from this is v1, 2 equals lambda 1, v1, 1, 1. Which says that v1, 1, 1 is v1, 2 over lambda 1. And putting that into the other equation, negative k over m v11 minus c over m v12 equals lambda 1 v12. What we get is negative k over m v12 over lambda 1 minus c over m v12 equals lambda 1 v12. Or negative k over m 1 over lambda 1 minus c over m minus lambda 1 times v12 equals 0. And switching signs around, because the other side of the equation is 0, that's no problem at all, we can write this we're multiplying through by lambda uh, as well as lambda 1 squared plus c over m lambda plus k over m and v12 equals 0. Now from our definition of x1, this equals 0. So what this means is v12 can be anything. So we pick a value, say 1. So let v12 equals 1, and then we had before that v11 equals lambda 1 v12. So then the first eigenvector is lambda 1 times 1, or lambda 1 and 1, or any multiple thereof. And similarly, v12 is lambda 2 and 1, or any multiple thereof. And so now we can describe the motion using the eigenvectors vk and the eigenvalues lambda k.